So now we're going to be looking at control geometry and Kinney effects, with a specific focus on looking how we can use control geometry to generate weights for our rig. We'll be working with a feature which was added in KineFX 19.5. To do so, we'll be looking at the attached joint geo node, and we'll be looking at some of the options which allow us to control the geometry which is attached to the rig. And most of these options were added in either 19.0 or 19.5. This scene is a very straightforward scene. I have a character mesh. This character mesh is already weighted. However, this is just a basic weighting. The weights have not been edited or painted. This gives us a base deformation, nothing more. We also have the basic skeleton, and this is the skeleton which matches the weights in this character. So to manipulate this, I can get a pose node. The pose node will be connected to my skeleton. I can then get a bow deform node, and we can connect these. The first input is set by the mesh. The second input will be set by our skeleton, and the third input will be set by our pose node. We should now be able to pose the skeleton. Here we have very standard weighting, which has not been improved. The mesh deforms, but the deformation is pretty horrible. This will allow us to see what the base deformation will look like, and this will make it easier for us to compare the deformations that we get later. So we're going to be editing the weights using an attached joint geo node, and we're going to do this by attaching geometry to our mesh. This node is usually used for creating controls for character, but we can also use it to affect our weights. We'll need geometry for our controls, and I'll start with a box. This is not necessarily the best geometry to use, but it is very straightforward. To convert this into a control, it will need a name, so I'll get a name node. I'll connect this after our box node, and I'll set the name to be box. For the controls, the name should be a primitive attribute. We can now work on our attached joint geometry. I'll turn off rest transforms as we're not going to be working with them. I can then add a shape. This will be setting all of my joints, and in this case, the shape that I'm going to add is my box. The box should now be instanced at every single one of my joints. I could change the scale of the box itself, but I'm not going to do that. I'll leave all of the values here at one. We're not going to be modifying the geometry directly here, so having all of these values set to one gives us more predictable results. In the Joint Geometry node, there is the Tweak tab, and this will give us options for updating the control geometry. For example, we have the Multiply Shape Scale parameter. This is basically a universal scale multiplier, and it will scale all of our controls. We should now already be able to use these boxes to affect our weights. This setup, however, will not give us a much better result than the result we are already getting. There are, however, also issues here which would actually make our weighting worse. An easy example here is the fingers. Here the boxes are currently overlapping, and this could actually lead to a worse weighting situation than what we already had. So I'm going to modify the shape of these controls. I'm also going to modify their placement. And to do this, I'm going to work with an attribute wrangle node. I'll connect this before the first input of the attached joint geo node. We're going to use this node to control the shapes of our attached geometry. To do this, we're going to create attributes to use in the attached joint geo node, and we're going to use this where it says use joint offset attribute in the tweak tab of the attached joint geo node. This means that we'll not have to update any of the boxes individually. In the attribute wrangle node, we'll start by adding some KineFX functionality. I'll do this with include, and we're going to include KineFX hierarchy.h. Next, I'll create some variables to control the width and the length of this box. I could add more controls, but in this case, I'm only going to use two parameters. These will be float parameters. The first will be called width. We're going to be controlling this parameter manually, so I'll want a parameter slider for this. I'll use the chf function to create a float channel. I'll call this channel width. I'll then add this to our node interface. We can then use this slider to control our box. The next parameter I'm going to add is an attribute. This does not need to be stored as an attribute, but I want to be able to see it in the geometry spreadsheet. So this will be f at, the attribute name will be length, and I'll set this to have a default of 1. So next we're going to want the attribute to use in our node itself, and this attribute needs to be a 4x4 matrix. To create a 4x4 matrix attribute, we'll use 4 at, and I'll call this attribute bone. By default, I'll set this to be an identity matrix. And we'll do this using the ident function. Any attribute that we use for transformations should initially be set to an identity matrix, 
This will allow us to apply transforms to this matrix, and these transforms will then work as expected. So now we can return to the attached joint geo node, and if we look at the drop down in the tweak menu, we should be able to see our bone attribute. I can now use this attribute to control my geometry, and the first thing that I'm going to do with my geometry is I'm going to scale it. To do this, I'll use the scale function. The first argument will be the matrix that I'm scaling, and that will be the bone matrix. The second argument will be a vector, and this will specify how much we're actually scaling by. Just go to comment this out for the moment, and we'll look at what we actually need from the scaling vector. So we're going to be scaling by our width and our length. In this case, the length would be along the direction of the bone, and the direction of the bone is in the z-axis. Using the transforms to calculate this relies on the transforms being consistent throughout the entire rig. If you do not have consistent transforms, this will not work properly. My width will be setting both my y direction for each joint and my x direction. So now we can add our vector. The x value will be width, the y value will be width, and the z value will be set with our length attribute. We should now be able to update the display of our rig, and the boxes should all have changed. Currently, a lot of the size has been set by our universal control. We do, however, have our more fine control, which is coming from our width parameter. The next issue that we need to deal with is our length value. Currently, the length is not actually based off the bone itself. Instead, it is basically a length of 1. So we want to calculate this based off our skeleton, and there are a number of ways in which we could do this. We could calculate it directly. We could also do this with the built-in nodes. For example, we could do this with the measure node. However, I'm not going to be using the measure node, and that is because there are other things which I do need to do which are not just related to the length. There are also potential issues of point ordering when it comes to using this node, as the joints in the primitives are not always going to be linked in the order that we need. So I'm going to calculate this directly based off the joints. So first thing that I'll need to do is get the child joint of every single joint. We'll store this in a variable called child. This should be an integer variable. We'll specify that this variable is an array, and we'll do this with square braces. So here we'll get the child of the current point, and we'll do this with get children. This is a function from the KineFX hierarchy library that we included earlier. This will have two arguments. The first will be our geometry, and in this case we're getting it from input zero. The second will be our point number, and we'll specify this using our current point, and we'll do this with at ptnum. So this will give us an array of all of the children of our current point, and there is a potential difficulty here in that there will be joints with more than one child. However, for most rigs, this should actually be inconsequential. Most of these type of links should not directly affect the limbs. The initial child will almost always be part of the limb, with the extra children being where we connect limbs to the skeleton. In this case, I know that I will not have any issues with this rig. So now we can use this information. However, we'll only want to use this information where we have a child joint. So we want to exclude any joints which have no children. To do this, we'll use a conditional. If, we'll then work on the length of the array. We'll use the length function. So len, and we'll check the length of our child array. And we'll see if this is greater than zero. If it is, we'll need two vectors. The first one will have the variable name v1. I'm going to want the position of this point. This is a point attribute, so I'll use the point function. We'll get this from input zero. The attribute name is p, and I'll get this from the current point width, at ptnum. I'll duplicate this line. The duplicated line will be v2. We'll get this point from the child array. We'll specify that this is the first point in the array, and this will be specified with the index 0. I'll then use these vectors to set the length attribute. So we'll have f at length, and we'll set this using a length function. This is not the same length function that we use for the length of an array. We also need to make sure that we're not using length2. Length2 is a more efficient function, but it will not give us an accurate result. This function takes a vector, and we're going to get this vector with v2 minus v1. Another thing which I'm going to change is the length. The default length will now be 0. This means that joints that do not have a child will not have a bone length. So we should now have an updated length. We also have a warning on the attribute wrangle node. This is because I have an incorrect variable declaration. Child should be an int and not a float. Our joints are not currently the correct scale. 
This is because of the length scale multiplier. This should be 1. I should now be able to use my width to specify the width of the joints. Our bones now all have much better length, however the position of them is not particularly good. So to correct this we're going to translate these joints. We'll use the translate function. We're going to translate our bone matrix. We're going to use a vector to translate this. And to do this we'll use a set function. We're not going to translate this in the x direction or the y direction. We'll only translate it in the z direction. We're going to translate this by half of our length attribute. So this will be f at length divided by 2. This will essentially give us a skeleton. However, we still have issues with joints overlapping. So we're going to create an extra parameter so we can create some separation between these joints. I'll call this variable length offset. The parameter will have the name length offset as well. So we've created our length offset parameter, and now we need to use it. And we're going to use it in the function where we set the scale. And I'm going to subtract the length offset from the length. We should now have separation between the bones, and we should be able to control the amount of separation. So we have now used our controls to essentially make a skeleton, and this skeleton should be enough for us to set our weights with. To set the skeleton to affect the weight, we'll work in the attached joint geo node, and we'll be working under the add shapes tab. The first option at the start of this tab will be roll. By default, this will set all of the attached geometry to function as a control. We will be using this setup to control our weights, however we have not set the weight yet, so we'll need to add weights to our geometry. To do this, we're going to use the KineFX preset node. This node was added in version 19. It is a wrapper node which contains the basic functionality to attach the weights to the geometry. This node is called Joint Capture by Harmonic. The first input will be set by our mesh. The second will be set by our skeleton, and this is the skeleton which we're going to use to define our weights. The third input will be used to pose our rig. Since I want to be able to compare the geometry, I'm going to duplicate the post node, and I'll connect it to the network here. So we should now have weights for our rig. We will also want the deformation, so I'll get a bone deform node for that. So if we look at the node now, we should be able to see our deformation. And as you can see, there is a very slight difference of deformation, but not any major difference. I can now return to my attached joint geo node, and we can change the role of the control to capture geometry. The geometry should now update. We should see that there's a small difference in the weighting here. In the joint capture by harmonic node, we actually have the ability to toggle whether we are using this capture geometry or not. And what we should see if we turn this off is that the weighting should be far smoother. If we turn it back on, we should see that there's a far smaller fall off for each limb. So the deformation around the center of the bone will be far more focused on the main limb. If we look at the hips, we should see that there's more compression on the hips. The default weighting will have far more interpolation here. This should apply to joints like the elbow as well. So this should give us far more control for the fall off of the weights, especially around the joints. So for example, I could lessen the distance between the bones by increasing the length. We should now see that we have a far more tight deformation around the elbow. We should also have a far more tight deformation around the hips. And we should be able to adjust our skeleton to get the results that we want over here. The easiest place to see the difference in this character will actually be in the face. Here we should see the default deformation where the nose has been deformed by the jaw and the control geometry leads to us having a much better deformation here. So this is the most straightforward way of approaching this. However, we can have far more complex and dynamic setups. In this case, this is purely an example and a test. It's not really a functional setup, but this is an example of how we can create a far more custom setup. In this case, this setup will be able to be used for things other than just waiting. For example, we could use these controls as a skeleton to drive FEM simulations. We can export these controls as skeleton geometry, and in this case, we are able to convert all of this geometry into tetrahedral meshes, which can be very useful in terms of simulation. In this case, I'm constructing my deformation skeleton of the character skeleton. This is a very basic setup, and it has quite a few weaknesses. 
Since these are constructed in world space, we need to update certain parameters in the attached joint GeoNode. Specifically, in this case, we need to specify that these are all going to be attached with world space coordinates. And this is done using the keep world space toggle. So in this setup, I'm basically separating the lines. I'm using the carve node to control the line length. I'm then resampling the geometry to give us more details. I'm then using a sweep node to generate my geometry. I'm using a ray cross to make sure that they fit the mesh more closely. I'm capping the holes in the geometry. And then I'm using a tetraconform to convert it into a tetrahedral mesh. So this gives us our basic bones. And as I said earlier, we can actually isolate these and use these isolated bones in simulations. To do this, I'm just using the delete node. And since all the controls are attached as part of a group, we can delete everything that is not part of that group. So we can also use far more accurate geometry here. We could also model our geometry here to make sure that it conforms to the mesh more closely. So that's a basic overview of how we can use controlled geometry to more easily generate and control the weights for our mesh.